This question comes to us from Al, and Al writes this, Dear We, I'm a lifelong Lutheran, but I also grew up surrounded by Baptist and non-denominational theology. A blog that I sometimes read has lately been talking a lot about having no need for continuous repentance and sin no longer being in us when we have been saved. I know this to be false, but I do not know how to argue against it. Any advice would be greatly appreciated. Thanks for the help, L. You know, L, just looking at your question, I want to repeat something that you said here, that this blog that you're reading says that we have no need for continuous repentance and that sin is no longer uh, in us once we have been saved. You know what this author is actually describing? They're actually describing heaven. They're describing what life will be like after we're resurrected from our graves and given new bodies in Jesus Christ. They're describing how paradise is going to be, how things are going to be so absolutely awesome without having to deal with the sinful old Adam, uh, the world and our flesh and all the stuff that goes on in the here now. They're actually not describing life as the Christian in this life, in this veil of tears, life under the sun. You see, what can happen is this, is in American spirituality, we can go from an understanding of seeing a person in paganism, completely in sin, in this sphere, and then conversion happens, and then they're brought to the status status of being a Christian, and then we say that there's no such thing as sin, that you're, you're free from sin. Um, and so what we end up doing is we say sin, and then we say no sin. But this part right here that we describe, we're actually describing glory, what happens after Christ comes back for us again. So how are we to think of the Christian life in the here and now. I would say that it's better to think of it instead of a uh, two different dimensions that we think of it as an overlappingness, if I can say that word. So in other words, we are born sinners in thought, word, and deed because of original sin, and we will be sinners until the very day that we die. I mean, this is what John says in his first uh, uh, the epistle of John, John chapter uh, 1 of 1 John, where if we say we have no sin, the truth is not in us. So we are sinners in thought, word, and deed from the time of our birth until the time of our death. And that goes on from the time we're born to the time that we die. However, we also have to keep in mind that we're baptized. And because we're baptized, that baptism then envelops us. And so there's an overlapping in this here and now that we are sinners by our flesh, by our birth, but we're also saints by our spiritual birth in baptism. So it's an overlapping period uh, for us in the here and now where we have the sinful nature, but we are not condemned for the sinful nature because we are in Christ. Think of Romans chapter 8, verse 1. There's therefore what? No condemnation for those who are in Christ. It doesn't say that there's no sin. It says that there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So I would simply say that we have to think of it as an overlapping period where we have the sinful nature from the time of our birth till our death. And then we have our baptisms that clothe us and the baptisms that carry us in and carry us through the second great coming of Jesus and the judgment that we are enveloped in his forgiveness of sins and taken to that great eschaton and life everlasting. So instead of that two spheres, think of it as overlapping and then consider things such as Romans 8, 1, that there's there for what? No sin. No, it doesn't say that. It says there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So I hope that helps and we'll catch you next time.